Hey guys, this is Brendan. Welcome to KNews episode 68 about the upcoming Atlas V launch with Echo Star. And I'm just kidding, Luke is here. For this mission, Atlas will be set up in its 431 configuration. That stands for a 4 meter wide fairing, 3 solid rocket boosters on the side and one engine on the center or upper stage. One thing to note is, the boosters will be placed in an asymmetrical fashion around the core stage with two on one and the third on the opposite side. But luckily the resulting asymmetrical thrust can be easily countered with a strong RD-180 core booster engine. On top Centaur, behind the fairing, hides Echostar 19 for HughesNet. The launch is scheduled for today 1827 UTC and will take place at Cape Canaveral, Florida. The mission profile looks like this. After only 5 seconds the rocket begins to steer or gimbal its core engine to get into a yaw and pitch maneuver towards east. Slowly turning to the side, it will break through the sound barrier 45 seconds into the flight and the maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle will occur shortly after. 2 minutes into the flight, the booster will be jettisoned, leaving the core stage burning alone for 3 more minutes. After that, the now empty core booster stage will separate, which is followed by the first Centaur main engine start and fairing jettison. While Centaur performs its 10 minute burn, let me tell you something about the payload. It is as mentioned launched for the US satellite internet provider HughesNet. The satellite will be therefore placed in a geosynchronous orbit above America. Orbiting at an altitude of approximately 35,000 km, it will revolve at the same rate the Earth rotates. Thanks to that, it will always stay in one place and you will have to point your dish south to receive a signal. As I have already mentioned in a video before, this kind of satellite internet has a major downside, which is its relatively high latency. To receive data from a server, your computer has to first send a signal to it asking for it. The signal travels all the way up to the satellite and back down to earth. Now the information you want to access has to follow the same route, which means a signal will travel a total of 140,000 km each time you click something on the internet. With the speed of light alone, this will take roughly half a second or 500 milliseconds, but the reality is a little slower due to all the signal processing on the way. Now while this is pretty bad compared to regular cable internet which can reach single digits, it is still far better than no internet and downloading or streaming video on YouTube, you won't really notice any difference I think. Echo Star 19 is more capable than its predecessor and should deliver a better coverage but it will take a few more weeks before it reaches its final spot in the sky. If everything goes according to plan, the center upper stage will release its payload at a super synchronous transfer orbit which could be easily confused with single stage to orbit. Super synchronous means it stretches beyond a regular normal geosynchronous altitude to make it a little easier for the satellite to circleize its orbit on its own. In this case the orbit will have a shape of 204 by 65,000 km. And at this point a thank you to United Launch Alliance for switching from nautical miles to kilometers in their mission description. I'm not sure if that was just a happy accident but I really welcome that decision. Now in the end a little shout out to my patrons who support my monthly crowdfunding campaign. Thanks a lot guys and if you want to contribute as well, simply follow the link in the description. Okay, that shall conclude episode 68 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.